Nuclear regulators around the world have been closely watching Japan's attempts to clean up the Fukushima Daiichi plant. They've watched as the plant operator struggles to cope with significant setbacks. Now a U.S. nuclear regulatory commissioner is visiting the site this week to check out the progress firsthand. NHK World's Reiko Sakurai reports. William Magwood is meeting with his Japanese counterparts and officials at TEPCO, which operates the power plant. He wants to hear about the challenges of dealing with 400 tons of contaminated water every day and see how effective the cleanup measures have been so far. The issue of the water that's being released uh, from the site is one that's troubled a lot of people. I've traveled to other countries in the region and even they are concerned about it. No shit. Um, the uh, Japanese authorities have come up with a, uh, an idea to use an ice wall to block that water. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. Uh, that's something that's a new idea. There are some questions that we have about it. We don't understand the entire idea, so we're going to get a briefing on that and uh, hopefully learn a lot more about it. TEPCO engineers admit that despite efforts to decontaminate the wastewater, radioactive tritium is impossible to remove. But Magwood is optimistic that tritium's actual damage to the environment could be relatively small depending on how it's released. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. The, uh, the processes that are already working on the site are removing the most dangerous uh, radioactive elements from the water. Uh, the tritium still remains. The tritium is very difficult to remove. Uh, however, um, it is probably possible to carefully release the tritium over time in a way that does not damage the environment and doesn't endanger human health. Um, I don't know what uh, Japanese plans are in the way of releasing that water, uh, but uh, from a technical standpoint, I think it can be done safely. You're going to need a bigger boat. Experts say that one of the most difficult challenges of decommissioning the plant is removing food debris left in the reactors after the meltdown. And Magwood says that there is no magic wand to wipe out this problem. I think people have to be realistic about how difficult this is and how long it's going to take. Um, during my visit to Japan this week, uh, people have asked me from time to time, you know, are there technologies in the U.S. that can help solve this problem? Uh, the reality is that there is no technology that exists anywhere to solve this problem. It has to be developed. It has to be done with research. Um, it will take time, uh, but clearly uh, there's um, fantastic experts in Japan uh, and around the world that can work together to find a good solution. That's the heritage we leave to our descendants. And we can talk to the cows come home about nuclear accidents, which is severe. But the most important issue is this radioactive waste piling up all over the world and no one knows where to put it and we don't know where to put it and we never will. And I've been debating with the nuclear industry for 42 years and they say don't worry, we're good scientists, we'll find the answer to radioactive waste. They haven't attended to it. I mean they're like surgeons, you know. We don't clean up after us, we just let the nurses clean up. We're not interested in the waste we create. We're arrogant. Well, so are they. They're interested in building bombs and designing nuclear parts. It's all very exciting. 
So I, I, I say to them, well, that's like me saying to a patient, I'm sorry, but you have pancreatic cancer, that's what the CT scan shows, and your prognosis is probably six months, but don't worry, I'm a very good doctor. In 20 years' time, I'll find the cure. Magwood says he wants to invite his counterparts and officials from Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority to the U.S. Commission so they can see how decisions are made there. We do business a bit differently than they do, as you noted. Um, you know, for example, um, in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, we work on a voting basis. Uh, we haven't really seen that with NRA. Mostly it seems that things come out in more of a consensus fashion. Um, we think that kind of debate's healthy, and um, I think it's important. Um, I have to convince other people, and I think that's a good process. It's a good discipline. And uh, so that's the sort of thing we can t discuss with our counterparts to see if they're interested in learning how we do, how our commission does business. But there will never be a cure to the storage of radioactive waste. So we're in a very, very, very serious predicament. And as Tim Rousseau's work shows that we're not the only ones with genes and who get congenital malformations. Magub stresses that U.S. authorities are always ready to extend further support to Japan. He's visiting Fukushima Daiichi again on Thursday. Reiko Sakurai, NHK World, Tokyo. All plants and animals have genes, and what we're doing with this radioactive waste, or when it leaks out from reactors or whatever, the Earth is in the intensive care unit, gravely ill, and we are all physicians now. To Healthcare workers in northeastern Japan are trying to shed light on a silent killer. More than 3,000 people have died in the years since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami and the start of the nuclear crisis. Government officials define these cases as disaster-related deaths. Some people died because of worsening of illnesses. Experts say the loss of family and home aggravated conditions. In some cases, people committed suicide. Different levels of government have been working to reverse the trend, as have some organizations, which are calling for a community-based approach. NHK World Ryo Asami has more in this edition of Nuclear Watch. The staff and volunteers at the non-profit group Nagomi have been trying to stop a growing problem in Fukushima. They work on behalf of the prefecture government to prevent disaster-related deaths. Kazuma Yonekura is the head of Nagomi. He's also a psychiatric nurse. We are still seeing more and more people with physical conditions and diseases related to the evacuation caused by the nuclear accident. I believe we can save these individuals if they turn to psychiatrists and counselors like us before they develop difficulties. More than half of all disaster-related deaths have happened in Fukushima Prefecture, which hosts the crippled nuclear plant. The blue bars show the number of people who died in coastal areas on the day the quake and tsunami struck. The red bars represent disaster-related deaths since then. The number has exceeded those who died in the area on March 11, 2011. Yonekura regularly sends his staff to evacuees to check on their health. Akihiko Katayama has lived in a temporary housing unit in the city of Soma for two and a half years. Katayama's wife died in 2013 because she couldn't get proper medical care. He started to drink to forget his pain of losing his wife and home. Spending two days without alcohol drives me nuts. All I can think about is drinking. I know I can easily go back to drinking again because I'm a weak person. Staff advise Katayama to stop drinking. They fear alcohol is endangering Katayama's health. わかってますね。<笑><笑>
Meanwhile, San Onofre reactor offline for leak as it's investigated. That is near San Diego, an extremely small NBC LA emphasizes amount of radiation could have escaped from the San Onofre nuclear generating station near San Diego a week, uh, after a water leak prompted operators to shut down the reactor, according to officials. An extremely small amount of radiation. Where have we heard these lies before? Meanwhile, only days ago, January 30th, Illinois' nuclear reactor loses power, venting steam in Byron, Illinois. Excelon Nuclear says a reactor at its Byron generating station has been shut down after losing power, and steam is being vented to reduce pressure. However, they say the steam contains low levels of tritium, which is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, but not at unsafe levels. Everything's safe, they keep reminding you. We heard this all before at Fukushima for months. They denied anything was happening. Then you saw the head of TEPCO, the prime minister of Japan, all weeping on television, sorry that they had lied to their own people and the whole world about the grossly dangerous levels of radiation. Now let's look back to an AP report from uh, six or seven months ago in the summer. June 21st, 2011, in Illinois, right next to the Byron, uh, excuse me, the Byron, Illinois nuclear reactor, where they discuss how tritium is being leaked. Tritium, which is a radioactive form of hydrogen, has leaked from at least 48 of 65 sites, according to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and their records. Leaks from at least 37 of those facilities contain concentrations exceeding the federal drinking water standard, sometimes at hundreds of times the limit. And then look at the caption over here in the story. Uh, you can see it on screen as well as behind me here that, uh, let's see, more than six million gallons of tritium laden water and repeated leaks dating back to the 1990s exist but were not publicly reported until 2005. But don't worry, uh, the AP and NBC LA have told you the levels are safe. There's nothing to worry about, just like at Fukushima. So. And we have a worldwide headline on that, too, including the leaks in France and other parts of the country here in the U.S. and other parts across the world. It's just going on everywhere. It doesn't have something to do with Dr. Busby connecting the radiation levels with infertility. I don't know. Time will tell. But will it be too late then? And will officials warn people not to live next to nuclear reactors? Or will they keep telling them how safe it is and... Now oh, it's no big deal. It's basically the same as not living next to a nuclear reactor. Hmm.